Yeah, I forgot to. <laughs> I forgot to wear my microphone. Of course, it's Easter. <laughs> the one time I forget to do that is Easter. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we still have this microphone, so I think I can get, I can get started. Good morning and welcome. My name is Soyeon Kim. Uh, and we are Wesley United Methodist Church, a Christian worshiping community in Hadley, Massachusetts. Today we gather with hearts full of joy as we celebrate a most wondrous occasion, Easter Sunday, the day our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead, declaring victory over death and offering us the promise of new life. Whether you are here with us for the first time or have been part of this family for years, know that you are welcome. Today, we are all united by the love of Christ, a love that transcends all boundaries, embraces all differences, and heals all divisions. As we begin our service, let us open our heart to the transformative power of the resurrection. May we be inspired by the message of hope, renewal, and love that Easter brings into our lives. Let's support one another, sing together with one voice, pray with one heart, and listen with open spirits to the word of God. Together, let us celebrate the miracle of Easter. Let us rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus lives, and because he lives, we too can face tomorrow with courage, hope, and love. Welcome everyone to our Easter celebration. Now please join me as we proclaim Easter together. Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all was lost. Yesterday, we thought Christ was gone. But not today. Today, we know that love has won. Today, we know that hope is real. Today, we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. You may be seated. Can't stop, Can't stop without shouting. Just gonna tell it everywhere. Can't keep that glory. 
Listen now to the call to confession. In the Gospel of Luke, the women came to the tomb, and to their surprise, instead of finding Jesus, they find angels. The angels tell the women, Jesus is not here. And when that answer is met with confusion, the angels say, Remember what he told you? Remember. It's one of the words Jesus used at his Last Supper. And it's one of the words we hear at the empty tomb. Remember. I think this call to remember is why we need the prayer of confession. And those words of forgiveness every single week. It's not enough to hear of God's grace once. We need to hear it over and over again and again, week after week. We need to be reminded that God's grace and mercy will never run out. So friends, let us run to God like the women ran to the tomb. Let us tell the truth of our lives so that once again we can be reminded that our God is a God of grace, mercy, and love. Let us pray so that we can remember. Join me in the prayer of confession. The stone is rolled away. We assume it is a mistake. The angels say, he is not here. We assume the news is fake. The women tell the story, but we do not want to hear it. Peter runs to the tomb, but we do not understand. Forgive us, God, for thinking an empty tomb is nothing more than a prank. Forgive us for seeing discarded burial cloths and still holding tight to death. Forgive us for pushing away reasons to hope when you are alive and well in the world. Teach us to see what you see. Unravel the threads of our unbelief. Amen. And hear again the words of forgiveness. The angels tell the women, remember what Jesus told you. So church, Remember this, you are seen, you are forgiven, you are held in God's grace. All of this is true. Grace and mercy abound for you. Remember this. Amen. And please stand for the opening hymn. Number 302 in the large hymnal.
Be seated.
All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Easter, it's such a beautiful day. So I'm gonna start by telling you a story. And as I am telling you the story, I want you to listen carefully for a few words. So make sure your listening ears are really on. I want you to listen for the words candy, eggs, and bunnies, okay? Nope, just listen for them. <laughs> on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. When they arrived, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they entered, they did not find the body of Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two angels appeared and stood beside them. They were frightened, but the angel said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Okay. Did you hear the word eggs? Did you hear candy? Did you hear bunnies? I just told the story of Easter. How come you didn't hear any of those words? Livy? <laughs> so those things have become part of our Easter tradition. And are they fun parts? Yes. yes. But they are not the real meaning of Easter. Easter is about Jesus and the wonderful good news that he is alive. So we're going to end in a prayer. Dear Lord, today we celebrate the empty tomb and we thank you that Jesus is not in the grave. He has risen and alive and because of that we can have new life in him. Amen. Now with the hearts wide open, with the spirits ready to serve and give, let us bring our gifts and treasures to share with those in need of God's love. Now please stand as you are able and let us offer our joyful hearts and gratitude to God. Gracious and loving God, on this glorious Easter Sunday, as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and joy. Your love rolled away the stone, turning the darkness of the tomb into the radiant dawn of eternal life. You turned our mourning into dancing, our, our despair into hope. As the women came to the tomb early in the morning, finding the stone rolled away and the tomb empty, we too come bringing what we have to honor you. In their astonishment and joy, they rushed to share the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Inspired by their faith in your unfathomable love for us, we offer our gifts to you. 
Bless these offerings, O God. May they be a testament to your enduring love and a tool to roll away stones of despair, loneliness, and pain in our world. Let these gifts be a part of your work to bring hope where there is despair, peace where there is conflict, and love where there is hatred. As we celebrate the victory of Christ over death, let us remember that we are called to be bearers of this good news, not just today, but every day. Guide us to use these offerings in our lives as instruments of your love and resurrection power. Help us to live as people of the resurrection, bringing light to those in darkness, joy to those in sorrow, and love to all. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hear now the words from the scripture, Luke chapter 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day, rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning to the tomb, from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today is a special day. It's Easter. So as um, during our children's message time, um, as Emily shared, it's not about candies or bunnies. I mean, it is. I mean, it is something that we enjoy, but it's not really about bunnies, candies, or eggs. Or it's not about Easter sale that you get 30% off when you shop toys and crafts. So what is it about? Something extraordinary happened about 2,000 years ago, and we want to celebrate it. But this day actually goes beyond a moment in history. Easter is about much more than a past event. It's about hope. And it's about the promise of new beginnings. But to talk about why Easter and the resurrection of Jesus is about hope and new beginnings, we have to talk about the person in question first. So who is this Jesus who died and risen again? So Jesus was born in Bethlehem in what is now modern day Palestine about 2000 years ago. His mother was Mary, and his birth was not ordinary. Mary was not married when she became pregnant. However, she celebrated her beautiful child and welcomed him into the world. He grew up in Nazareth in a family of what is believed to have been modest means. 
As an adult, Jesus began his ministry preaching about the kingdom of God, love, forgiveness, and a way of life that was often at odds with the religious leaders of the time. He was too radical and liberal for them. And he was compassionate. He cared about suffering people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and even rose the dead. And he did not want to do this alone. He wanted other people to care about others too. So Jesus gathered followers whom he taught and who traveled with him. And his teachings emphasized love for one another and mercy over judgment and the importance of personal relationship with God. However, his teachings and actions, particularly his claims to be the son of God, alarmed the religious and political authorities of the time. Around the age of 33, he was arrested, tried, and crucified by the Romans, Romans a common form of execution for criminals. We believe it was Friday, and that's why we observe Good Friday the day Jesus was crucified and became a victim of the system's violence and injustice. So, why do we speak of death and such a dire story on this Easter day, which seems to be about the joyous occasions of Jesus' resurrection? Because without death, there can be no resurrection. Without the ending, there is no new beginning. And without despair, hope cannot find its place. After 2,000 years since Jesus' death and resurrection, those of us who live in the modern world are too, all too familiar with the wounds and scars that conflicts and injustice leave behind. In places like Ukraine, Myanmar, Sudan, and recently Palestine, wars and violence claim thousands, thousands of lives, displacing families and shattering communities. And in the United States alone, gun violence remains an evil upon our society. Each year, tens of thousands are wounded or killed by firearms, echoing the cycle of despair and mourning that continues to repeat itself. And racism, too, continues to inflict deep wounds on the soul of this nation, indicating that we still have a long journey toward equality and understanding. Discrimination, particularly against the LGBTQIA community, finds its way into our communities and schools. As we all have seen in the recent incident with the Amherst Regional School District. For those un, um, un, un, unaware, a report was submitted that a middle school counselor and some staff engaged in discrimination against LGBTQIA students. And the school failed to protect those students. Such painful realities. It makes you wake up in the middle of night with the feelings of despair and grief. Through the Lent leading up to today, we talked about Peter and his faith journey. And we can imagine what Peter must have felt in the wake of Jesus' crucifixion. He was traumatized by seeing the violence and injustice that killed Jesus. It was not just about it, it was just not it was not just his death, the humiliation, the, the, the physical and the psychological abuse that was done to Jesus, the isolation Jesus suffered. Remember, Peter denied knowing Jesus three times and ran away. So 
Peter had seen all of that and experienced all of that. And Peter must have thought he failed to be the disciple of Jesus. He must have hated himself. I don't imagine he was able to forgive himself. The overwhelming shadows of our world's suffering is so great that it's hard to see the light of hope. And in acknowledging these pains, I think it's important to revalidate these feelings. They're real, they're profound. The anguish of loss, the frustration in the face of injustice, the weariness from endless conflict. These emotions mirror the despair of those who stood at the foot of the cross, feeling as though all was lost. Yet it's precisely here, in the depth of our collective despair, that the message of Easter finds its most potent expression. Easter doesn't miss, does not dismiss our grief. It acknowledges it and then promises something more. Easter, more than any other, signifies a profound transformation. From death comes life. From despair springs hope. And from defeat emerges victory. It's in this divine turnaround that we find the true essence of Easter. Imagine the early morning quiet, the tomb sealed and guarded, the dis disciples scattered in fear and grief. Then the unthinkable happens. The stone is rolled away and the tomb is found empty. Jesus has risen just as he promised. This is radical. This event is the cornerstone of our faith. It speaks of God's power over death itself. The resurrection assures us that renewal and rebirth are not just possible. They are promised to us. It's a promise that darkness will not have the last word, that love will ultimately triumph over hate, and that peace can be achieved in the midst of turmoil. This assurance empowers us to face our challenges with courage and faith, knowing that we are not alone in our struggles. Easter is a living promise, a reminder that no matter how deep the despair or how overwhelming the night, a new dawn awaits us. Easter teaches us that God's love is more powerful than any adversity that we face and that renewal is always possible. And this transformative power of resurrection is already in our lives. It's a source of strength when we feel weak, a beacon of light in our darkest moments and the foundation of our faith that sustains us through all trials. Most importantly, I believe the hope of resurrection is not passive. It calls us to action. It inspires us to work for peace, to strive for justice, and to extend love and compassion to all. Here's a quote from a person named Dean Johnston. I, I wish I had more information about this person. I looked up, I couldn't really find anything, but I really liked this quote, so I wanted to share it with you. Jesus didn't die so that you don't have to. Jesus died so that you would know how to. Jesus didn't die instead of you. Jesus died ahead of you. Jesus didn't rise so that you don't have to. 
They just rose so that you would be able to. And Jesus didn't rise instead of you. Jesus rose ahead of you. Death and resurrection isn't about substitution. It's about participation. Substitution keeps people in a suspended state of spiritual adolescence. Participation liberates people to fully partake in the divine nature. Jesus said, follow me. Let me close my sermon. He's not here, but has risen. Jesus' is call to follow me is an invitation to walk a path laid out by his life, death, and resurrection, a path of love, justice, and peace. It's a journey that asks us to bear our crosses, to confront the darkness in our world and within ourselves, and to believe in the promise of new beginnings, even when they seem most distant. We are reminded today that Easter is not just a day to celebrate the past, but to look forward with hope to the future. If each one of us carries within us the potential for renewal and change, just as winter gives way to spring and the, de- and, and the earth awakens with a new life, so too can our lives be transformed by the power of the resurrection. As we leave this place, let us carry the light of Easter with us. Let it illuminate our path and guide our steps. Let us be agents of hope in a world that so desperately needs it, spreading love, peace, and joy wherever we go. Remember, the story of Easter is the story of God's wonderful window of divine surprise. So go forth with joy in your hearts, with faith in your steps, and with love in your actions. Let the hope of Easter, the promise of new beginnings, be reflected in your lives each day. May the joy of the resurrection fill your hearts, and may the peace of the risen Christ be with you now and always. Amen. Now join me as we say the affirmation of faith in unison. We may weep through the longest nights. We may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the burial cloth and still long for more. But today, we are a people of hope. We believe in new beginnings. We believe that the God who created the world is stronger than death. We believe that Jesus abides among us, healing, teaching, and leaving fingerprints throughout this world. We believe that a tomb could not hold him. We believe that the sun does rise. We believe that Peter was there, with the questions, awe, and faith the size of a mustard seed. We believe that the story is not over yet, for God is among us. Today, we are a people of hope.
The God of every morning be with you. People of Easter morning, lift up your hearts. People of Easter's joy, give thanks to the one who raises us to new life. On this day of joy and hope, Redeemer of the lost, we sing our praises to you. Very early in the morning, your word shattered in the silence of chaos, and grace flowed forth like a river. You reached down and gathered up the dust of creation, forming us into your image and breathing life into us. Yet the day came when we chose to turn from you, believing our wisdom was superior to your will for us. You sent us the prophets to speak of your gracious hope, but we refused to listen. When you could have left, let us remain in the clutches of sin and death, you sent Jesus to be one of us, so we could come home to you. Therefore, we join our voices this morning with those who stood at the empty tomb, as well as those of every time and place, singing our Easter joy to you. Holy are you, God of every day, and blessed is Jesus Christ, bright morning star, creator of all that is good. He entered the shadows of hell to lead us into hope's light. Beloved of your heart, he embraced our sins so we could be forgiven. Glory beyond imagination, he welcomed death so we could enter life eternal. Even as we believe what we may not understand, we trust that mystery we call faith. It's here at this table, resurrecting God, that we are fed by your love. As you pour out your spirit upon the bread and the cup, fill us with the spirit of Jesus so we may go forth to be your people. Free us with the bread of heaven so we can feel the hunger, the hunger of the world. Touch our lips with the salvation's cup so we can proclaim the goodness of this day to everyone we meet. And when the morning comes, when we are united with all the saints gathered around heaven's table, we will lift our voices to you, God in community, holy in one, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our communion servers um, join us up front, I want to invite you to come to the Lord's table. You don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be... Methodist, you don't have to be anything except a person who is decided to turn away from a life, um, from a life of sin and turn around, turn toward the one person capable of saving you, and that is Jesus Christ. And also, as you receive the communion elements, please come through the center aisle and receive the um, communion elements and return to your seat using the side aisles. And here we have a prepackaged elements. They are gluten-free wafers and grape juice. If you are using prepackaged elements, take the empty cup and dispose of it after the service in the receptacle that's placed outside the sanctuary. And there's also a place where you can leave the emptied cup, um, glass cup. And that one, we'd appreciate it if you don't discard them. There's also a place you can leave the glass cups. Thank you.
Now please rise as you are able and let us sing our closing hymn together, hymn number 303, The Day of Resurrection. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat and, tomb and run to the tomb and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I, and be not afraid. You're called, you're blessed in both your ups and your downs. You always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. Amen. Wesley, that we all sing the Hallelujah Chorus together if you can and we would certainly encourage people who want to sing with the choir and have that support to come up here you will find copies of the hallelujah chorus at the end at one or in the other of all of the pews and you can grab a copy and stand up and sing along with us or just follow along and and listen but we encourage everybody who'd like to join us to come up to the front It'll be the basses over here, the altos down in front, the tenors on this side, and the uh, sopranos down front here. And while we're gathering, um, for those of you who are visiting us today after the service, we are going to have a little celebration out there with lots of food. So if you could stay and then you know um, stay with us after the yeah, service, that would be great. Cool. Thank you. Tenors over here. <laughs>